Hustle nigga, big shit. Go in. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Uh, name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none of you know my day are all gone. Man, guess what, man? God been good to me, man. I got a guy in here today. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. No, man. Hey, hey, listen, 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 listen. <laughs> this guy right here. This guy right here, man. <laughs> Say, man, you know, I, I listen to him at night when, when you go to sleep. You know what I'm oh. saying? Oh. Yeah, because his videos are a little deeper than all the other ones that I watch. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, man. Oh, okay, okay. Right, yeah, yeah, you got the videos going. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to that boy B King in hey, the building. Man, I am on Boss Talk, man. I told you before we got started. I'm a big <laughs> fan. I love all the interviews. <laughs> I love the lighting. Oh, man. <laughs> I love everything, man. man you know thank you so Straight much, up. man. We love yes, you, bro. We just been waiting on you to get here. I've been waiting. Ever since I was after that call uh, interview, I started uh -huh. going for him. I said, I'm going after B. King. And yeah. he answered me right back, too. And he was, and we've been back and forth ever since. So thank you so you much. You don't get nowhere with that Hollywood-ass shit, man. I I'm, I'm <laughs> don't feel like I'm too big to talk to nobody. But you That's had it, these you know records, you you was taking them around to everybody. I remember that. You talking about the other blacks? Yeah, when yeah I was that's right. That's right. When I, first, yeah, yeah, I, was, I think Pop, was it Papa Run might have got that's one. My, that's like my brother. Yeah, and shout out Papa Run, top of all uh, business. And and I was like, man, that boy had been in town. I, did you take one? You didn't go to East Texas one, did? You? TB, uh, he didn't get one. I gave TB one. Okay, okay. I gave TB one. Okay, one. yeah. I was like, man, this boy going around uh, doing it right, man. Hey, man, I, I look at it like, man, I. For a nigga to call himself Club God, I ain't shit without DJs. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So they've kept me afloat the last 13 years. That's you know real. What I'm so, yeah. That's, That's real. Good. DJs. But I want to know about um, you as an individual before you became Club God, Gorilla mm -hmm. Zoe, all of that sort of Gorilla, stuff. Gorilla <laughs> Zoe? Gorilla. Beat King. Club, Club Godzilla. Club, you know what Club Godzilla. That's what it is. Gorilla Zoe. That's the homie. That nigga, that nigga, that nigga, that nigga, is he doing anything? He um I, I recently just saw him at the uh, the tycoon thing. Fifty Cent I think had I did, yeah, I did yeah, see you know, them. So, yeah, I be nosy on you know. know. We follow each other. I'm, I'm in tune with what he got going on. He you know everybody just you know you hit a certain you know plateau man. You know a lot of people if you're not doing it on the same level you were when you first came out, people think you fell off, but. You know, he still works. Well, let me just break it down to your layman terms where you would do it in my level. You know, nigga get a, hit a big record, get a little money, and the nigga change, you get lazy, he don't do it as hard as he used to, he ain't got that bite no more like he used to. <laughs> but you know, I'm, 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 you know, I'm going to tell you the other side of that. You get on, you get a big song, and then you turn up, and then all of a sudden, next year, you have your song again. You give it to all these same radio stations, but they just don't play it. Wow. Because they're playing the turned up nigga that's turned up this year. Mm -hmm. That's real. So now they're not playing you next year. Your fans look at you like, why are we not hearing you as much? Have you fell off? No. My music's still hard. They just ain't playing it this year because they playing a new young nigga. And then five years later, your money dried up. Everybody think you fell off. That's the reality. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. That's the reality. Dang, now get him again because he's trying to get out of it. <laughs> That's the yeah. reality of it, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I, name my label is Never Fall Off because I believe in longevity. I'm a Houston nigga. I come up watching the OGs like Slim and, and, and uh, motherfucking Michael Watts and... That's what I'm cut from. What wow. part of saying? Houston were you born and raised in? I'm from the north side, Studywood, right okay. next to Acres Home. Siblings? Siblings, just my mom, uh, my younger brother, but he was young, young, you know what I'm saying, 10 years younger than me. But for the most part, I have an older brother on my dad's side, but okay. my dad, he was he lived in Austin, so it was just me, my mom, my little brother. Okay, wow. so you weren't really involved with your dad as much? I... In, um. I say I probably sp spent all together tallying up all the time, probably a month. Really? Yeah, just all the different times, different weekends or week here. Or, you know, like we um we weren't seeing eye to eye, eye like eye. that when I was young. And now when I, before he passed away, he passed away when I was uh, 18. Mm -hmm. We got good before he died. Okay, you know that's what good. At least we you did good. before. Yeah, you know. we got good before he died. My, did my you younger ever brother. Ask him he, why? Uh, it, it was we, we know why you know what I'm saying it's just you know when you get older you know what I'm saying it, you understand as you get older when they die that's when you sitting there like damn okay well 
this, you the reason I ain't ugly. I, I, wish, I <laughs> wish I knew more about you and shit. You know what I'm saying? When, when they gone, you know, it, it's over then. You can't talk to them then, you know, so, but we got good before he passed yeah. away, so. Yeah, but um, yeah. but you and your mom real tight. My mom, yeah, she the whole, my whole musical inspiration. She the whole reason I know how to play a piano. Really? Know how to. So she does all that? Yeah, well, she she passed away in 2015, you know wow. what I'm saying? But Sorry she, it's cool, yeah, she the, whole reason I'm musical you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying raised me up in church kept a piano in the house she Did was she the, um, yeah she was the musician at church so she would play the piano I would play the drums and mm. Yeah. And that's what you did in church too. Mm -hmm. So you you know joined the choir could you sing? I was in the choir like I was I went to church so much. It's the reason why I guess I don't fuck with church now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I was in church so much as a kid, man. Choir rehearsals on Wednesdays and Fridays, and you got a, you know, what I'm saying, uh, 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 what's the what's the word, uh, uh, a revival or something. You know, uh, every other month, Sunday you got church, and you got the morning, the, the because evening you were being service, forced the night to go. Service. That's Damn, me like got I gotta that. stop, man. And you did it for years, man. You know, you in church too much when you eat with them. Yeah, and you I go to lunch with them. With yeah, them yeah, and yeah. You have to. Everybody go to lunch, and like I would go to church and be excited because it was donuts in there. You know? <laughs> like I would eat them before I go in the service and get the drumsticks and all that. Like it was, yeah, like it was different. I went to church so much, you know what I'm saying. So now I'm I'm grown, and it's just like. My mom passed away. I stopped going. I, I was like, like I ain't really. I was going because you was making me go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, but now you know it's. And I, I, I kind of hate that for my daughters because they, they aren't raised in church, but they're good young women, and I make sure that they know who God is. I was just about to say that's the yeah. main that's thing. That's what we do too. Yeah, just but they're they not know. in church like that. Because no. I'm just like, man, look, I feel like. That's what all that's what all the hoes said. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, so keep y'all out of there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But up. you know that you are the church and as much as you know, because I was raised in a church as well, but it was a case where I was forced to go. Not forced to go, but it was tradition. Yeah, Every Sunday yeah. you get up and you know, let's go to church. If you don't go to church, you know, what you mean by you not going to church? You you gonna go to church. So you just went because you had to go. And I couldn't tell you everything that the pastor was saying because sometimes yeah. I fell asleep. It don't really relate to your life. Yeah. At that time. You know, you're young. You know what I'm saying? It's, right. To me, it's, uh, I feel like if you can find ways to make things easier, it's like I dropped out of school twice because I didn't feel like waking up to go and getting dressed to go and catching three Metro buses to go and all that. You know what I'm saying? With church, you got to wake up. You got to put on uncomfortable church clothes you got to get in that car. It's all hot in the morning. You got to, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, the a whole, job. it's a job. It's a job. You know, when you can just, you know, learn about God if you're fortunate enough to have good parents. You know But that's saying? the crazy so. thing because, what you know, being raised in the church, to me, I was blinded to certain things. Realize, as I got older, I realized that some people don't know God, don't know anything about God. But, you know, when you're raised in church, you think that, oh, everybody know about God. Not everybody go to church, but I just feel that everybody knew about God. But I've met people as I got older who said, I never even saw a Bible in my life. Well, see, we all are, are a reflection of our parents. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm Again. saying? And the generation we in now, you got to think about it. I was raised in church. As I'm grown, I don't go. But I still have enough sense to teach my children about God. Exactly. A generation today, if they haven't been raised in church, they're not going to teach their kids about church and the kids they ain't even gonna care nothing about that you know what Real so talk. when did you start going into like the hip hop yeah the music, music. You, you how, old were, how old were you um, I'm 38 I turned 38 in November no how old were you when oh, you how started oh how old was I right. when I first started listening to rap music uh, my first favorite rapper was a woman oh, uh, the brat ooh yeah, I like her I love the brat you don't even know what the brat was her zip song code what? Man, yeah, what's the, the damn zip code? What you mean the zip code? She used to say that on every. It's the six o o four four through man, your door. I ain't even <laughs> know nothing about no zip code. All I knew is I had a crush on the stud. And I ain't oh, know, yeah. and I ain't know who the stud was. I was like, man, our braids are pretty. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? She's pretty. She and was dope, though. So she was dope. Yeah. Like, the rat was, you know what I'm saying? And from there, I started getting 
getting into Snoop and Dre and Ice Cube and Menace Society and Boys in the Hood. And I'm just like, yeah, rap music. Man, you. So I was bumping. And the funny thing, we I did not know back then when I used to love seeing a brat that she was Lisa Ray's sister. Yeah. Did not know One that back then. One time she dressed up as a female and she was cute. It was like, damn, was I one. remember that. that you remember that song with Tyrese? <laughs> <laughs> that was my first crush, the brat. You know what yeah. I'm saying? My first two crushes was the brat and Lisa McDowell from oh, Coming to America. Oh, that girl Lisa bad, right? Lisa was bad, man. I have a date Lisa. with Lisa. I have a date with Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Man, man. the way he's looking at him like, whatever, <laughs> man. <laughs> man, so, you know, when I look at Houston, man, the sound down there, mm -hmm. uh, it was a different uh time when when i came up um yeah. it was uh i'm gonna come down yeah. uh, but even before that you know even with scarface and them it was a it was a it was a it was technical and it was you might can be okay if somebody died because you could listen to scarface and it'll get you through you know what i mean i'm being real but mm -hmm. then um it seems that your music and the way your punch is and the way your the sound is is different from Others in Houston, the traditional, the, the traditional, the traditional sound. sound. So, how did you even come into this developing a different sound? In you know, I'm into it now. Why didn't went in? Wait, yeah, nah, nah, I'm gonna I'm I'm <laughs> you tell you that. that's a good question though, because um, I'm from the north. That's, that's Swish House. You know, what I'm saying the whole. I didn't came down the whole the traditional flow, but I'm a beat nigga. I love the beats, so I'm very Memphis influenced. Okay. I love Memphis hip hop. My favorite rap group of all time is Three Six Mafia. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, with a normal Houston kid, the message he would have got from Lil Kiki, I got that same message from Project Pat. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, saying that first, I don't. You know what I'm saying? I don't drink or smoke. Okay. Never did. Never did. Never tried it. Really? You know what I'm saying so. Just like my brother, y'all niggas square as hell. In a city I where I commend you for that. And, and, that hey, you know what? I'm man. just lame. I'm just he, like, back you know in the days, is? man, I'd have gave you some bubble gum. I'd have laughed your ass. I'd have laughed hey, at you. Hey, but niggas tried that though. They tried to give me one of them weed brownies. <laughs> and when I ate it, everybody was laughing and shit. And I'm like, what the fuck's so funny, man? It was weed brownie. Everybody laughed. I really wanted to fight about it. I was of mad in the motherfucker. Like, like, that shit can fuck you up. Yeah. Like, but I didn't even get high. Must not have been a good one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyway, you know, so I don't drink or smoke. So in a city where everything is slow, I'm the only one with energy. So I'm not coming done. I'm not. I love it, though. That's our culture. That's I love it. But that's not me. I like Memphis shit. And I'm getting fucked up. I love my H Town niggas too. All these niggas on the wall, they know I've been to my house. Them shout out to the OGs. That's our identity, you know, but that never was my I, I just started meeting the OGs of my sound two years ago. People like Ludacris. Okay. And yeah, you know I remember what I'm I was gonna like, get into that. Like people like Ludacris and, and two chains and yeah. you know what I'm saying, Juicy J is like my partner, you know what I'm saying? That's my that's my idol. That's who I want to be like still. You know, Juicy so, J. So you let know, me ask so, you this. Now, hold on before you go any further. Yeah. When uh when uh Busy Bone chunked that mic over there at him, <laughs> did you feel the type of way? <laughs> He's like, what the hell? <laughs> What's crazy is if I would've if I would have been there, I'd have been fighting with them. Cause that's how you don't play that's by how them. I ride like like gangster boo. That's like my big sis. Like so you, she you, was like, it would have been I'd have been outside with. It would have been bad. It'd have been just like that with them. I'd have been fighting with them. Whatever went down, you was gonna be down with it. Cause that's my favorite rap group. That's real. You know what I'm saying? Like it. I probably it, it, my thing is if busy throwing the mic I'm not gonna just hop in some shit that ain't my business <laughs> but as soon as some niggas would've tried to punch Juicy J <laughs> I would've it'd have been a Texas nigga <laughs> that's my favorite rapper of all time you know I'm finna fight my idol in well, front of me well you know already you know Flip was I'm over saying, there with them yeah. right hey but hey <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Flip. That's my nigga, man. I'm tripping, right? <laughs> what, Flip, man. what makes them your favorite rappers? Why? What is it I that's I think I just related to them at a time where I was uh, turned into a teenager. You know what I'm saying? When I was 16, it hit me what I finally wanted to do with the rest of my life, and that's make beats. You and, did, man. 
Yeah, that's yeah. that's heavy. Yeah, because yeah. beats out of everything else, out of rapping and just beats. Well, see, I, I was a rapper first. I started making beats because them motherfuckers cost too much. <laughs> and I was like, I'm broke. I don't have any money. Let me just start making my own beats. You know what I'm saying? Making my own motherfucking beats. And my mama bought me this cheap-ass keyboard, this Casio keyboard, but it had a mm-hmm. sequence on it. And I was able to make loops, and it'll keep playing back over and over again. I can just add more and more to it. So... I start making beats around that time because I'm listening to sipping on some scissors hey. and UGK and three six. Man, and I'm like, glad you just said this that. This is when I started realizing this is how I'm gonna fit in with society. This is what I'm gonna do with my life. I'm Did you get to meet him? I never got to meet him. Wow. Never. I I, I, uh, I turned up right after he passed away. Wow. Yeah, but, but just talking to his wife, but like. Shanara, she was like, man, Pimp would have loved your goofy ass. Right. Cause y'all both are filthy. <laughs> y'all both make beats. Like, he would have loved you. Mm-hmm. Bun B tell me that. You know Aww. what I'm saying? But Shanara really tell me. And I, I met Pimp Mom, though. I met her. She was real cool, real nice and sweet to me. I, um, I met his mom, though. She was cool as hell. That's good. I never met Pimp, though. I wish I could have, though. Mm-hmm. That'd, have been a, that'd have been a song. Well, you, you know, that's my favorite artist, man. That's my favorite all that'd time, been a song. man. And, that'd have been and, a song right there. He was he was just he, the way he did music was different too. It was oh, it had yeah. a different feel to it than what 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 the traditional sound was, and that's what link made me like him back in the day. When, when I grew up, I uh, um you know when you're younger, I, my first song I ever heard from them was "Tell Me Something Good." I mm. probably was in the first grade or some shit, listening to that on a Walkman, and I just I, I loved that song. And when I grew up, I didn't realize that he made the beats. Yeah, I was like, well, he was making them beats, bun. Yeah. It's like, damn. I'm like, I'm like, so that's he's singing the hooks? Cause I ain't know he was that was him singing them too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know that was you know I'm saying I didn't know that. You know, so yeah. You know, shot R. I. P. the Pimp, man. Straight man. up. Man, you got the same story, because I was at the Dangerfield Track Me when I heard Tell Me Something Good, and that's my favorite song. Tell me so something good. So that was good. that was the one that turned me up. Like my favorite one is uh Diamonds and Wood. Man, that's that come in second. That come in second. That beat it's all acoustic. It's no keyboard sounds in there. It's all guitars. It's all somebody's hands making everything you hear on that beat. And then Pimp just come on there with that, that singing ass hook. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, so that beat like that still. And the shit he talking about, like he on there talking about some real shit. So. You, you know what? Let me ask him about the, the, the relationship that Pimp had with uh, with the, with the uh, Triple Six. Um, like, I know that they was real close, man. Mm-hmm. And and they was close before you was able to meet either one of oh, them. Yeah, I heard they was gonna make an album called Underground Mafia. It just didn't have enough time Damn. to do it. But that, that would have been, been crazy. crazy. <laughs> just the thought of it. That yeah. would have been crazy. Yeah. A bunch of sipping on scissors. Man, I'd have loved it. That's all I know, mm-hmm. man. And that boy, uh I think what Pat, he down there. With, Project uh, Pat. Yeah, he on one of them pictures down there. I met him, man. Do, dope dude, man. That's just, the homie. Yeah, I love, I, love, I love his spirit. He was a good guy. So, mm-hmm. still a good, great guy. I love to get him Real on the show. Nigga. He, he um, was, he's, he's speaking at the prisons now and shit. Like, yeah. he don't do oh, the rap good. so much. He He's more on his pastor thing now. Yeah, you and and, and DJ Paul. DJ yeah, Paul. that's the homie, too. I talked to him. I, I just did a beat for him. You know what I'm saying? So did you? Drop, meet him in Too Short. That's going to be crazy. Yeah, I ain't met too short yet. I said, oh, that's a bet. What? I ain't met short dog I met, yep, I met, man, I love short. You know short I, I, short I, I, used to shoot that pool back in the day. You know, I met him, but I ain't meet him. You know how you, yeah. how you met somebody, is just high and passing, but that's y'all ain't really had no conversation, you know what I'm nah. saying? I ain't meet him, meet him yet. You when know we were saying? young, he used to come down and met him in Dallas at uh, Lakeside, mm-hmm. and uh, he would shoot pool with people, just random, like people that was in the, you know, mm-hmm. in the club. That was real I had a, um I had a show with him in uh, 2011 at uh, Langston College in Oklahoma. It was a homecoming. And I remember they had us both booked. It was me and him on the same thing. And they had him headlining. And I remember feeling a way about that. It was 2011. And I'm a new artist. I'm like, man, why they got this, this nigga headlining? I'm club guard. Like, what, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I went up there. I killed it. And then when he went up there, he demolished it. <laughs> and I learned. I say, man, I don't, I don't play with these old niggas, man. These old niggas will always put you in your place. Mm-hmm. Nigga went out there, don't be acting like a bitch. Don't play the shit. Damn. All right. Turned that hoe up, didn't he? Let me sit my young ass fuck out and learn something. You know what I'm saying? But, but that's, just, that's, 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 that's real respect for you even a stand-up because you're a learner. You got to, man, 
I'm I'm going on year fourteen next year. You know what I'm saying? That's like, dope. Um, I had just did an interview before we came here, and it was like, how old are you? I said, I'm finished turning 38. And I'm like, damn. I said, if I came out when I was 25, though, with Dippin' Low Crush, all that. Got uh, My first hit was with Candy Red. Yeah, independent yeah. Independent bitch. Yeah, yeah, independent. That was in 09. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's good stuff, so though. So I've been outside, man. Man, I, I just, I love the way you get down, man, with that music. Your beats is stupid. I want to know yeah. about the beats, though, because you have the air for beats, so... Out of all the songs, like, have you ever just turned the radio on or hear a song and the beats just, like, like just amazed you, like, the way in which the composition of the beat was? Oh, yeah. Which song was that that stood out to you out of everything you've heard? A beat that amazed mm -hmm. me. I'll tell you mine, then you tell me yours. And I ain't even no beat type dude, but I got one. Okay, it's, what it, is it's it? It's a lot of, I, can't, I couldn't You can't just, just name one? The one that... It you, would have to be um, something from Timberland. Really? Yeah, that would like, be. It had to be something from Timberland. I think it was um, like that 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 second Missy album. That uh, the, the, the genuine second album. Like it, Timberland is a uh, retarded motherfucker, man. With them beats, man. Yeah, I can't. It's so much music in my head. I can't just think of one beat like that, but. Is it because they put something together that you would have never imagined them putting together? You're like, dang. He, well, that's he really how I did. view music, like right. especially with production and beats. Like, if you, I've been doing it for twenty plus years, so it's like if I hear a song and I hear the beat, I was in the band, so that's a gift and a curse. When you're in the band, you can't hear music normally no more. Mm -hmm. Anything you hear, you pick it apart instrument by instrument. So anytime I hear a song, I can see what you did. I can see what you pressed. I can, but when I can't see what you did, that's when you're good to me. So you sound like my daughter. That's what my daughter said because she's in the band yeah. and she'll listen to something and she said, "Oh, that's the flute. That's the that's yeah. the bass. That's the this." Yeah. And I'm like, "Huh?" When you in the band, it, it trains your brain, and you just you can't hear music right. normally anymore. Like it's like from the second you join the band, everything after that music sounds different. Even when you go back and listen, I remember I joined the band. <laughs> in high school and then I went back and listened to old Bone Thug songs and I heard shit that I never heard when I was younger. Mm. I was like, man, I ain't even hear that come in, that little instrument. Tell you know me. what I'm saying? So it's like the band, that shit make your ears Tell fucked me, off. How you, how, you, how you feel about In The Club? Uh, when, when 50 got on there in the club with Dre, did you like that beat? Oh, yeah, I love that beat. That beat right there for me was beat. stupid. I didn't know what, I didn't care. I just know I heard the beat before I heard them rapping. Uh -huh. They were mixing it on 106 and Park. Not on 106. You see those crazy? Yeah, on, on, yeah. To me, that beat was hard, but I feel like 50 Cent is what made it special. You think that? I didn't think that. I love that beat before I heard it. That's what I'm telling you. I heard the beat before I even they hadn't even played you just heard doom doom I liked the doom, wankster doom. beat more than in the club what I, li I loved it too I liked it too I liked that one too but I'll not like in the, club. Hell in, no. in the club hell no in the club was a better song to me no man I liked that that beat was hard though too that beat was different beat you ain't heard hard. nothing like that before that beat came I liked, out I liked many men more than in the club that was good yeah many men beat that Drake was got Dre different Dre, yeah, not Dre. Dre is Dr. Dre that's is why different, no one man. Could, no one could see him in the verses cause his, his family tree is I tell everybody all the time, the most important person in hip hop is Easy E. I without with Easy E, there's no with Dre. That. I and agree without with Dre, it ain't rap. Well, no, everybody, I don't everybody, everybody, damn near. Stop his playing. Tree. You gotta think about how many success stories. I come can't from agree with tree. that, man. You got you got to you go got all the way back. You I'm an old school oh, nigga, no, man. Me too. I, so, I respect KRS One. Why you and I respect the whole New York side, KRS yeah, One, Public Enemy. Yeah, but you gotta say, yeah, Eric B and Rock Eric him. Eric B and Rock but, him. No, nah, even but you, but to you gotta respect you from Houston. You know the ghetto boys and all that stuff was before that too. But you gotta understand, or, or right along the lines of things it. have been influenced by certain things. Ghetto boys was already there, but with no death row. Where are we in music right now with no death row and no NWA? Mm. That was heavy. That's yeah, Easy E. Yeah. He found he he put the dope money in the Dre, and made NWO. I said NWO. That's made wrestling. NWO. That's wrestling. NWA. You made NWA, and then Death Row, and then Pac. Pac was already Pac, but that, that Death Row Pac was was a turned up young nigga. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just I tell niggas Easy E. 
I've been very going, important nigga, man. We, we, we just interviewed uh, Kenya Ware, and she gave a lot of stories about Easy e man. Kenya Ware, uh -huh. she was uh, that's Dad's, dad's wife. Baby okay, mama. okay, shout out to Dad. Yeah, that's Dad Dylan. Yeah, y'all make beats. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah that's <laughs> and he in to Atlanta, dads. so yeah, I, fuck I know dads. you be all down through Atlanta. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to Dad's man. Dad's be having some funny ass interviews. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's I, funny, I, it's funny because when I interviewed. Uh, um, Kenya, she had a lot to say. You I know, about I met Dad through Gangsta Boo. Oh yeah, uh huh. We I want to interview her. Gangsta Boo, Gangsta hey, Boo. she just did a yeah. hard ass drink challenge. Shout out to my big sis, man. But Gangsta Boo, if she, if she in Dallas, she'll pull up. Oh yeah, that's, the well, homie. that's how I got you on speed dial. Now I'm worried. He like, man, send her. She's I try my best to set it up. That's big sis for real. Like, no man, you just one of those extraordinary yeah. guys, man. You did songs with everybody, as far as the females. Uh, that really be banging, man, it, and it tripped me out. He, you work with Erica Banks. Yeah. And she out home. of Dallas, so you got to mention that. <laughs> Somebody got to take her phone these days. Hey, <laughs> it's going crazy, ain't it? Everybody, everybody <laughs> saying that. Hey, shout out to Erica, though, man. man. She, she just, she growing up in front of everybody, and yeah. she just making young, young uh, mistakes, you know, and, and all you got to do is keep jamming. Man. You keep jamming and forget about that shit. Yeah, but the funny yeah. thing Keep is that, jamming. but the funny thing is that in the beginning of her career, she wasn't doing all of that. Nah, she so was then she was humble and everything like that. And then all of a sudden, now out of the blue, she's going through the stage. She, and I'm like, she, she, she young. Where is this coming she from? She young and she getting money. She getting money. She's That's seeing a lot. She young and she, I, I couldn't imagine having all the money I have now at 25. It'd be a lot be of crazy. pregnant bitches around here. <laughs> be it'd, what? Be, it'd be a lot of pregnant bitches around here. It'd be a lot of shot niggas. What you say? Get them. Like, like 25 with that much money? Man. Like you. Nobody I could couldn't tell imagine you that. having the money I have now at 25. I wasn't mature enough to handle that. And, you just, and then if you feel a way about something, you're going to tweet it. You're going to make a video about it. You're just young. You just Nobody can tell you what to do. Anybody that try to give you any authority... You got more money than them. Why am I listening to you? No, that's but real. But I hear that. So do you ever like try to, when you see other artists that you might know doing crazy stuff like social media, do you ever try to like DM them, pick up the phone, call them? It's like, hey, just to give them advice. Hell no, because that's like the fucking kettle. What did it say called? The kettle, kettle black? black. Kettle, kettle. <laughs> I've done some crazy, stupid ass shit. Like I started cucumbers. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you like, cucumber guy. That's when I seen cucumber it. King. I couldn't do that today. They nah. get me the fuck out of here. You know, Man, what I'm you know when I tell people you did that, they be COVID. like, "You going to jail?" I started COVID. Don't no, right when I tell you. <laughs> I, <started COVID. laughs> right. I be telling people about him. I be like, "Yeah, we got B King in Texas. Hell, B King pretty much. Uh, yeah, he started a lot of different stuff. A lot of trends." I knew, yeah. I, knew that, I knew that shit was crazy when uh, Uncle Luke followed me. What? I was gonna ask you about that because that's who you basically well, you bring followed, that energy that that that's the type of feel you bring. I used to get bring. mad at that. People are like, man, nah, you the new you the, the new, new Luke Skywalker, <laughs> you the new Uncle Luke. I'm like, nah, nigga, I'm the first club guard. Fuck, fuck out of here with that bullshit. Nah, it was I get serious. it. I was there. Yeah, I, I remember. I was showing people shit they ain't seen in like 20 years. That's like real. girls, like you know, I love black women. <laughs> My mama was a black woman. <laughs> I got black daughters you know hey. what I'm saying and it is what it is like my shows black women were doing white girl shit that's white girl shit black women don't stand in front of the mirror for two hours and get ready mm -hmm. to go out to put a cucumber in their mouth this is not what's going on but that's what was going on in my shows what where, you think, where did you get the inspiration from for that man um it's a long story. I'm gonna try to make it short as possible. Okay. I was it was 2017, and I was um I was on tour, and uh, the tour was it wasn't going well. I had went in with a promoter, who was a really good pr promoter in Houston back in the day, so I thought the tour would go gr good with him if I put him on this tour. Mm -hmm. But he was good back then. He wasn't good anymore. I didn't know that until we got to all these right. dates and tickets weren't selling. He wasn't promoting them right. The people who showed up were people who found out about the show from my Instagram, you know what I'm saying? So all the dates looked bad, and I felt like he was trying to destroy me. I was like, man, I need to find a way to climb out this bullshit. So um, Papa Ron, he had uh, just did uh, Bebe's birthday party or something. It was a pool party or something. He said, bro, I played your song Scream, and it's turned up on its own. The whole man. pool party went crazy. And I'm like, I ain't even put no money or nothing into that. Well, maybe that's just God trying to give me a song. Okay. I said, where's well, video time? Let's shoot a video. We're going to shoot it in Dallas. I'm going to call every nasty bitch I know. Every bitch I fuck, 
All of them. Call them up. Strippers, I don't, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to get a high-rise apartment downtown, and we're going to shoot that video. And we we shooting that video. I'm sitting there on Snapchat recording everything, documenting it and everything going on. Bitches eating ass, pussy, everything. It was other rappers there. I ain't going to say their names, but it was, yeah, it was going, <laughs> going crazy up in there. I look up at the end of the night, my Snapchat has 69K views on it. I ain't never seen a number that big on my Snapchat. I'm like, what the fuck? Everybody watching this shit. By the next day, I was trending on Twitter number one in Central America. So I'm like, well, it's time to put this video out. We put the video out. It, I get 100K views in a day. That's the first time I ever done that. I never got a video with 100K views in one day. I was like, well, I got a hit. In the video, I had girls sucking cucumbers, eggplants, any dick-shaped object, a remote, anything I could find to put in the bitch mouth. We was putting it in the bitch mouth. Wow. So that you wouldn't get, that was smart in I a way, so you wouldn't be getting, that nigga so you won't get genius flagged. Part two. I was just trying to top tip drill. Mm. That hard, social that's media, hard. Social yeah. media even that's flagged you for any of that, although it wasn't the real thing, I, I would think learn. that they I, would I'm gonna still. get there, I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna get there. I'm saying now, when the video came out, it was crazy because nobody had ever saw girls suck cucumbers and shit mm -hmm. like that. A banana here and there. Not a once cucumber. Not a cucumber. So I'm like, well, how can I bring this video to my fans on the road? I just bring the cucumbers from that video to my shows. And the first day I did it, Academics posted it, 50 Cent posted it. Did it in Colleen. Mm -hmm. Wow. 50 Cent posted it, Academics posted it, all, Ball Alert, all the blogs posted I said, oh, shit. Got you. Well, my next show, I said, let me do it again. And then Academics posted it again. And all the blog posts, I said, man, I found me something. This been to turn me up like a motherfucker. That's real. You know what I'm saying? So and it, it, it turned me up. That whole disgusting Justin character, I started believing that. I thought I was like a comic book character. I made my hair green to match with the green emojis and the Nigga cucumbers hustle. and all that. It's and I hustle. was like, I made money off that whole little disgusting Justin era. But... I learned from that that it's not the 90s. It's not the 90s anymore, and I got banned in a lot of states in the Bible area because my shows were too freaky. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Every time I would do a show somewhere, that city would be destroyed on Facebook the next day. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of mayors and stuff in those counties and stuff, like they weren't feeling that. They weren't trying to let me come back. It was, it was a spot in Arkansas. I couldn't come back. city in Arkansas, I couldn't come back. Permanently, um, or if you change probably, it, it, I, I yeah. probably can come down. Yeah, I was about you know to what say. Saying? But back then, no, nah, not no more. They're thinking about you know their saying? daughters. Yeah, <laughs> they're thinking about their daughters. You know daughters. what I'm saying? So, you know, when that when that was happening, I was and I, and I was so into that character, trying to be like the the freakiest rapper out. And that wasn't you. I'm a freaky. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I can't fake it for 13 yeah. years. You no, know what I'm saying? Going but down. I was on the verge of porn. Mm. And I realize when you when you walk in that line, it's, you can't go up. You know what I'm saying? Because once you're showing bitches fucking and shit, where else can you go now? You know what I'm saying? It's it's you have to keep a certain tabooness. You can't just be throwing it out there like that a million mm. times. Cause people get used to seeing it. And I used to get a kick out of putting shit on Instagram that don't belong on Instagram. People like, man, just start you a, a porn a hub porn and hub. put that shit on. I'm like, no, I want to put it where it don't belong. Yeah, that's right. How <laughs> come your page never got took? It almost did a couple times. They you know sent what I'm you saying? They, they emailed you? Yeah, but yeah. see, I had that. Um, when did I get that check? I got that blue. And when you got a blue check, they give you more chances. Mm. Then will they take your blue check? No, they won't. They just take your page. No, I had a guy on here that said they took his blue check. Well, yeah, you know, I think they take blue yeah, checks nigga, I, away. I guess it all the way out over here. I think they I take they blue, blue checks check. away when you um when you go through a certain portal to get your blue check, uh, and with whoever uh. you went through, they don't fuck with him no more. Mm. So they like nigga, all your blue checks you gave out probably a fraudulent. Let's take them all away. Wow, that you gave out. Wow, it's kind of like if a cop put somebody in jail. He ain't do nothing. Now we gotta go back and look at all your cases. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's probably what happens with that. Oh, yeah. yeah. How hard were you how hard was it for you to change from that cucumber person to trying to do a yeah, different that's kind a of music? I had to. Well, I'm a um 
He still go. He do what? it uh, behind the scene. Oh no, no. <laughs> Columbia dropped me. <laughs> Chevrolet man, we about to ask you about that. You got cucumbers in these women mouth today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but no, nah, man. It was. I realized that um, I could never hit the next level because YouTube will flag the fuck no, out of my yeah. videos. Right. I understand that, but people they were expecting that. They were looking for that. So for you to try to change up your image and present something new, you know, some people are like, I'm oh, tell, well, that's I'm gonna tell you what it was. I'm gonna tell you exactly what it was. Now it's hitting me when everybody started doing it. Once Boosie and them, yeah, and Trouble yeah. and them, I got artist name Trouble too. Yeah, but once they did it at his house that time with Alexis Sky and all that, I was like, well, it's not just mine anymore. Now everyone is doing right. it, and I look at myself as an innovator. So once everybody started doing it, it's time me to move on to something else. So you know what I'm saying. So when they did it, it became a fad, and I was like, all right, well, I'm done with that. And I made my hair back black. And uh, I put out a song called Bald Head Ho. It did good regionally. And then the world closed down. It was the pandemic. You know what I'm saying? And um, when that happened, you know, everything was all fucked up. You know, you couldn't tell nobody in January that mm -hmm. the world was going to close down like that. You know what I'm saying? But I made that song, then leave. And during really? the pandemic, uh, a 15-year-old girl from Dallas 15. just turned it up on TikTok. For no reason, it just mm. went dumb. Yeah, you know that Den Lee was big. It was huge, man. I sent her a I lot of money too when she. Yeah, did I was it. about to ask, did, did you give her some? Money? I didn't send her uh, like too much to her parents. Like, nigga, what the fuck? <laughs> but I sent her like this, let her know, man, you were just bored in your room one day, but you changed my life. Just being bored, that's being a, a kid, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So that's that's, yeah. that's real big. Um, so did you? Do you ever make a, a hit so big that you like? How am I going to top that? No, because I um I make beats, so a person like me will never fall off because anything that's going on, we can f find a way to fit into what's working or uh, decide to change it if we want to. When you make beats, I can listen to anything going on, whatever's hot right now, and make my version of it. And you won't even think I got inspired from what was working not right now. You know what I'm saying? I can just make sure I fit in the pocket so I can be in the algorithm and I can... And that's how I've been... You know what I'm saying? My 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 audience. For me to be 37, I still got my hand on the pulse of the, of the youth, like like college kids, and you know what I'm saying. I know how to. I don't look 38. I look 27. Hey, you know what I'm saying. So I know how to. Yeah. Let me ask you, you know this: um, what, How did you? It, it seemed like Ludacris hadn't really been doing music. How did you get Ludacris to come mm -hmm. back out and do music again? Shout out to Luda. You know what I'm saying? Oh, 20, um, yeah. Then Leave was the hottest song in the world. Twenty twenty. The only other song that was bigger than that was uh, WAP Wet Ass Pussy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, if it wasn't WAP, it was Then Leave. Oh, I, I, and Throat Baby, number three, top three. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So in Atlanta, all you heard was me. You know what I'm saying? And Ludacris, his DJ, reached out to me first. He was like, hey, man, you know the A love this song, man. Like, Luda want to meet you. I'm like, Luda who? <laughs> <laughs> you go, Fast and Furious, motherfucking word of mouth. Goddamn, back for the first time. Goddamn, I'm a Luda fan. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah, he want to meet you, man. Next time you in the A, man, come to the studio. I was like, bet. You know, I've met everybody. I'm a Houston nigga. You know, I don't get starstruck. I done met goddamn me and Drake are friends. No. Goddamn, I've I, I've met everybody. But when Every you met time, Luda, you was I went to fan mode. Because I was trying to play cool. When he walked in that motherfucker, oh, man, Luda. No. When you had that big hey. head on that one video, hey. man. Then when you had, cause yeah. I, my videos aren't normal. His creativity you know what I'm saying? is out. Like, I always have some costume or something in my later videos now. You know, you look you know dope. what I'm saying? Like, I try to, I can't just get an Airbnb and just have a bunch of strippers in there. That shit boring. You got to right. do more things. And he was one of those people, him and Busta Rhymes and Missy, yeah. Missy Elliott, Elliott yeah, that whole Hype Williams say. era. Like, you know, so when he got there, he was just chopping it up, man. I was just telling them songs I like, songs I don't like <laughs> by him. Shit I wish he would do. You need to get back with Sean, uh, get back with Bangladesh, nigga. How come you got more beats from him? <laughs> he was like, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I was in fan mode, just talking to him like he's a normal person, man. But and they need they need to hear that. They need to. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel every artist, you need to have people around you who can remind you of the era that they fell in love with you. That's real. 
You know what I'm saying? Because you living your life. You, you worry about the next chapter. Mm -hmm. But let them remind you who you is so you can take that into your new shit. You know what I'm saying? So, but Luda, he cool nigga, man. After we had met, I played him a bunch of beats and shit. And I was like, I mean, I remade one of your songs, man. Uh, Pussy popping. I sent it to him. And he just hopped on that motherfucker. I was like, nigga. <laughs> Cause Luda don't let people remake his music, music. like that. That's I'm love. probably the first artist he let do it. Really? Then he let Suki do it later, and uh, he just let Dream Doll do it recently wow. with her new song. But Luda don't play that. Luda just don't let niggas just remake his songs like that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man. That song came out, that, that the Fast and Furious movie came out in the same week. I got free promo and everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Damn so, it. That's yeah, real. Man. That's real. Fast and Furious have a, Different type a of, lot of fans. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's that opens you up to a wide range of different people that's Luda looking at you. me because he make a different kind of money. Like yeah. I'm rich too, but he's rich. Rich. rich Do you like, want to go into film? Yeah. What kind I'm of a, film? I'm a damn fool. I, I say probably comedies. Comedies, anything that's anything with a script is cool, man. Because I do something serious too. Like I, I, I switch it up. So your personality I, is more of a comedian? I say, yeah. Yeah, that's my brand. You, you can't do the romance? I could do that too. I could do that too. I mean, you I better be able to be a chameleon, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I could do that. I always go back to baby boy. Like, I, you never would have thought the dude from Smart Guy could have played that role with Tyrese like that. Yeah. He's yeah, a whole gangster. Yeah. He's a whole okay. gangster. And you believed it. Yes, you yeah. did. You know what I'm saying? So I, I could step into that. Like, I really like acting. You know what I'm saying? So Have you been in anything yet? No. It's, it's a lot of people... Um. They, they hit me about shit. That 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 new show on Netflix, uh, uh called Mo. Okay, so why that haven't you? I didn't. You know, it's crazy. My manager turned it down, and she ain't even talked to me about it because she knew I wasn't gonna do it. And you weren't. And she, I, I, I probably wouldn't. Have. Them just explained it to me. A show called Mo City. I'm a North Side nigga. Don't make sense. <laughs> I'm from the North. The show is about the South. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was kind of geared toward a white style of comedy. Yeah. Not the hood nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? And when I saw it, I was like, man, now this is a dope show. And it, it would have been dope to be on there. You know it's what I'm saying? It's show your versatility and if you can play. Versatility. Right. Versatility. Always trying to hang with the niggas. You know what I'm saying? And it could have been, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I got I got my manager hitting up about the sex season, uh, the second season. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask you this, man. Um, you you in Houston, man. You 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 dope. I mean, I've been dealing with a lot of Houston cats since I've been doing this, and all of y'all live, man. Appreciate I like you, say, man. Lil Kiki, ESG, that's the homie. That's the homie. DJ Cho, all that's the, the different homie. people, man. And I I I asked about versus. That's my thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I, that's how, that was my next you know question. I'm coming, you know? <laughs> but you he know, know, I'm the only know one setting it up. I'm coming. the one set this up, man. I know. Come on. How the hell you gonna do it? You don't even know who the artist is. Wait a minute. Nah, let's get right here. Nah, <laughs> let me say, yeah, yeah, this versus, this versus, yeah, this this thing right here. I asked uh, uh, DJ Chow. I asked e ESG mm -hmm. about going up against uh, Lil Flip. Lil Flip. He said he would win. And he, he said because he said he's the he said he's the free he said he's the freestyle free God. God, you know. And then I turned around and asked who was next when I asked since you be Kiki. Kiki. Kiki, I asked Kiki about uh, who do you, who did I put him against then? Since you so want to be on, up on my verse, did you put him against Flip? No, I did not. Who? I put him against. Um, Slim Thug, Slim Thug, which is from your side of town, right? Uh -huh. And no, then, no, I yeah, 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 Kinda, kinda, yeah. We both know, yeah. Okay, <laughs> but, but, but I you know, know what I know, man. No, but then I asked uh, DJ Chose, and when I asked DJ Chose, I put him against Sauce Walker first. He mm -hmm. brought up B King name, like he wanted that smoke. And DJ Khaled, you know what I'm <laughs> and he brought up DJ, DJ Khaled. Khaled. He said he's so big, he probably would have went toward the DJ Khaled thing. So I'm just asking you, cause he brought you up. In in this situation because I guess he felt like you was the competition. No, because he said a lot of people, a lot of put, people him, put him up put against him. Up, and that's what he right. said. Yeah. Who do you, do you yeah, think you can win? Him in front of that. In front of that <laughs> <laughs> who, who do you think will win in a versus between you and, and DJ Joe? DJ and how would you win? We you know? Y'all both got uh, uh, music. Hey man, you know what? I'm not going to say how I would win but I'm going to say I know my catalog for the last 13 years. And I know my stage presence as well. Have y'all seen my shows? They're amazing. 
Are they crazy? I know my, <laughs> I know my state. I know how loud my voice can get. How, how I project on stage. And I know how funny I am too. So, I'm not gonna say who will win. All I'm gonna say is, I'm a bad motherfucker. That's it, man. Like I, shit, man. I, I know, I, I know what I have. I know. I, when I, I would just keep hitting you, shit. You forgot about it. it. You'd be like, oh, I forgot about, oh, shit. <laughs> the, oh, like, the people I can bring out on stage with me. The the, the way it's going to come through, it's going to come down. Like, if I just bring Ludacris, I'm like, what? The, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, bring 2 chain money bag. Yo, I, I could. But like I say, man. It's going to be. Shout well, out to all you know, because it's, you know. it's a lot of stuff going on there with Chose, too, now. Hey, you know, man. he got a lot of you know, big what? songs. Hey, hey man. Hey man, hey man! Shout shout to uh, <laughs> shout to Big Chose, you know. <laughs> yeah, Who man. have you not worked with yet that you would love to work with? Drake. But y'all are partners. Yeah. So why you ain't work with him yet? We gotta find the right song, the right song at the right time. You know what I'm saying? Because my thing is with Drake, I know people hit him all the time. Hey, yeah, man, please yeah. do this verse. Please save my life this year. Please, 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 please. <laughs> and every time we hang, we just be chilling. Yeah. Just be chilling. I'm not finna be one of them niggas. Drake, please, please. Let me ask you something. Is his memory good? Like, if he got on the stage with somebody 10 years ago, uh, do you think he would remember him? Or he would, if it was a big group, or a group that was with Lil Wayne, had a song with Lil Wayne? I'm sorry, Wayne. Nation in the <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I know. 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 I can attest to myself. I meet a lot of people every week of my life. Okay. You know, so I'm pretty sure Drake meets way, way more, more people. You know, so if it's not a real relationship, music, or something where, you know what I'm saying, like, I'm not going to just remember everybody from 10 years ago. So if Drake you know and you saying? stop talking today. Yeah. Drake you ain't talk to him no more. Drake been, we've we been, we've we been cool for like two or three years, so he's going to remember me. <laughs> You know what I'm he saying? Gonna, like, he gonna remember me? He gonna remember, because, like, Drake is a type of nigga, just from my short time knowing him, as clean cut as he is, he like ratchet ass shit. Yeah, mm. yeah, well, he gonna like remember you for damn sure. He gonna, he gonna remember you, you done did like, some songs. We are, when, when, when we be talking and shit, it be like four or five in the morning, like, I don't know where he be in the globe, on the globe or whatever, but, he be up at five, like it's five p.m. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Drake, like a lot of hood ratchet ass shit. And you don't know even what I'm saying? Look it. So it's no way you can follow me for three years on Instagram <laughs> and forget me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I'm. Yo, even though, even though I'm a little more chill are. now. I'm a little older now. You know what I'm saying? I'm chill now, but Drake like ratchet shit, man. Straight up. That's real, man. So, how did you land your deal with Columbia? Like, like, how did that go? How did that whole thing happen? TikTok. Really? Motherfucking TikTok, man. They didn't you know what's crazy? TikTok. Mm -hmm. Me and Kirko, we had this conversation a couple of years ago. We was like, man, all this shit wasn't around when we had our first explosion. Like, when we came out in 2010, uh, MySpace was dying, and Facebook was kind of, Twitter was in its baby st stages, you know what I'm saying? But we didn't have... Like, I think the first song that blew up on social media in that era was um, Flick of the Wrist on Vine. Yeah, Vine yeah, turned yeah. up Flick of the Wrist, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, we didn't have all that, you know what I'm saying? But I had been me for 10 years already, but when that Then Leave came out and, you know, that girl, uh, her name Bougie Tay on TikTok. Let me shout out. That's Bougie Tay. Bougie, she probably like, she probably grown now. Shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but she made it when she was like 15 years old when she did uh, the video that then that went leave. viral. That. But uh, yeah, man, when it started blowing up, going crazy, and um, all the labels, to me, that meant more to me than all the money I have now, that bidding war for a wow. week and a half. Wow. A week and a half of every label in the game trying to give me them M's. And I was just like, I couldn't get no sleep. Hell no. Because I'm just thinking about it all night. What am Okay, Republic talking about. Yeah, that's a good way to go. Okay, yeah. but Columbia talking about. Okay, but Capital and Atlantic talking about. 
You know what I'm saying? In a scope talk. You know what I'm saying? Like all of them was because when it finally popped off, all the labels had already knew who I was because of my track record over the years. Like I've been on the radio in all these major markets for the last 10 years. So they like his track record. If we sign him, we he won't fall off. He don't do drugs. That's real. He can make hits for everybody in the building. Damn he can sure. make beats. He right. He he do all that. You know. So you know, I tell artists all the time, man. Whatever a, a label is offering you, <laughs> it's some fucked up shit. Say tell it. them other niggas that shit. Be like, look, man. I really appreciate your offer, but they trying to give me this. What yeah. you trying to do? Yeah, that's business. You know what I'm saying? And I did that because um, who who was it? It was. Uh, Warner Brothers. Columbia had offered me a number, and then Warner Brothers came with a whole bigger number. And I was like, all right, Batman. Warner Brothers, man, Batman, they over there trying to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Shit. So I told Columbia, because I liked our conversation with Columbia, the A&R at Columbia, he was from Dallas, and he, he lived in New York the last 10 years. He said, bro, he said, I want you at Columbia. His name KC, still fuck with him. He said, bro, I want you over here at Columbia. He said, because when I was in high school, we was jigging and everything in high school to your music. 10 years later, you are still that nigga. Wow, that's dope, that's dope. I want you, Columbia was on the label asking me, all right, so what's the next song? What's, what, what's the next single you plan to drop? What's the, what's the album, what's the? And to me, it just seemed like a better choice. So I went with them and the bag was bigger over there. Wow. So yeah, and we still rocking. New music coming out. While well, wait on this verse right now, I can't really speak on it, but uh, it's definitely coming. It's coming, dude. It's I'm coming. gonna ask you about uh, just how's you and Sauce Walker's uh, relationship these days? Shit, we don't have a relationship. I mean, do y'all talk? Y'all do music? Yeah, you in Houston? Most people think I'm being real. No. When you from the outside looking in, you like sure. Houston over there and Bun B and yeah, you, B King, yeah. Sauce, all y'all come together. We all Kiki. in the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all but in the it, city. But but it's yeah, bigger it than what you think. Yeah. With with me and him, it ain't no relationship. We uh ain't no beef either though. We've been in the same spots. We was just at the sneaker summit. Dope, dope. Yeah, you know, but um I wouldn't say it's a relationship. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a big it's hey, what is it, the fourth biggest city? In the, Shit, in the Dallas, United y'all States? Um, come to radio, y'all like the number four market. Of course, but I'm talking yeah. about for a size market. Y'all got that I feel size like Houston over there. and Dallas about even. No, no, not in. I hell feel no, like, yeah, we the same size. Hell no, no. Like, man, you better look, look it up. up. Look it up. Dallas, hell Houston. no, Houston is the fourth biggest in the United States. Well, shit, we the biggest. I'm, I'm with it. I'm shit, being real. I know because I, I drive it home. I feel yeah. like <laughs> I drive this mother. No, I drive Houston. It is like forever, nigga. I feel feel like Dallas is bigger than a motherfucker. Well, I guarantee you, Dallas you got is a McKinney. circle. You got all You can't that. count McKinney. That's different, oh, man. It says Houston is larger yeah, than Dallas. Yeah, Houston is hey, big as hell. I never knew that, though. You didn't? I never knew it's that. It's huge. Hey, Houston bigger than a motherfucker. It's the fifth largest city in the United States. <laughs> so be. what Dallas is? Type in Dallas. Dallas <laughs> way smaller than that. <laughs> Houston big, man. Y'all got nah, it going Houston on, Houston big man. than a motherfucker. Yeah. I think, like I said, when I think about you, though, and just the way that you you have your own lane, man. Mm-hmm. Nigga, you know, you got these new artists. Let's talk about this for a minute. You know, Talamisha and mm-hmm. give me his name again because he's sitting That's right trouble here. Fam trouble Psycho. Fam Psycho. Psycho. That's Big a boy. crazy name. That nigga, that nigga be right. I said, bro, shorten that shit. I know. Bro. I can't I'm, I'm, like, like, I'm nervous but, about but, saying but, it. But, 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 but see, I just keep but see Trouble Fam is a real, that, that's a that real is. click and organization. So he was like, nah, I'm standing on that and my name is Psycho. So Damn. it's kind of like, it's like ASAP Rocky and NBA yeah, young boy, you know, so it's like I like I respect it, you know. So, so. how did y'all like? And I'm gonna ask him some questions, mm-hmm. but just how do you pick who? Because everybody wants to be a part of what you got going on. You in a pocket, really, to where you by yourself. I'm being real yeah. around the people that you're around yeah. and the, and the sound that you bring in. How do how did you pick who you would have on this team with you? Well, I've been helping artists my whole career, but it's only That's been different. females though. And like 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 the girl that's on the then leave song, on the hook. That's the same girl from Yeen about that life. Yeah, bro. same girl. So I've been helping women my whole career. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, he go hard as hell. Oh yeah. Let me try to help a dude. 
You know what I'm saying? It was, it's a challenge for me, and I like helping people. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't no fun if you just up here by yourself, like, yeah, I got all this money, man. It's, yeah. It's lonely at the top. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know, so I like to help people, man. I, I took that page out of Gucci book. That's real. He's helped so many people. He's immortalized in Atlanta. Like, he's so many people from history. Young Thug, Gunna, maybe, the Migos. It's just, and it's all because of Gucci. How many you know artists have you ever had before? Like, since you started, you know, um, helping artists? I'd say um, probably about five or six. Some so of them didn't did work before. out. Some of them did, um, yeah. Uh, I used to have a female from Beaumont, Big Jade. Um, my girl, Talamisha. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, and what's the thing you've it, learned the most from the ones that you've lost? Keep it professional. <laughs> That's a good thing. Got to keep it professional. Keep it professional. Keep it professional. And um, But that's hard when you're trying to be, I'm say, friends or, you know, crossing over into relationships. Because we've had, um, I think Johnny came on here, Johnny and MD, and he's like, it's hard to have a female um, artist and not get involved with them. Because if you don't get involved, then you have to worry about, the boyfriend when they do get involved with somebody else it's hard trying to get into their head and getting them distracted and all of that other stuff I you know not 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 to you know cause I know women hate this go on say but it but women are a little emotional oh they know that it yeah. is what it is hell these niggas is too though <laughs> you but, damn right they you know are what I'm saying women are emotional you know what I'm saying and you know for the most part man some guy gotta be in her life to keep that shit balanced. <laughs> you know what I'm no, saying? Either it's gonna be the manager or the boyfriend or something. But the boyfriend and manager but, might not be, they might bump heads. They might not be on the same accord. Man, you know, at the end of the day, man, I tell any artist, girl, guy, whatever, if you're gonna link up with a manager, make sure they can at least do for themselves what they trying to do for you. If mm -hmm. they can't get their self in clubs or they can't get their self interviews or certain shit sense. they can't do, how can they do it for you? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? A woman will That's listen to a mm -hmm. guy and let him lead if she really believe what the fuck he's saying and it's making sense. She gonna be like, I didn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Okay. I gotta ask him about, uh, you did a song with X, so she does our intro song. XO, uh, I'm talking about the, uh, from uh, East Texas. <laughs> yeah, oh, did, shit. that's our intro that's song. That's our that? intro. Me and her go back to 2010. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I had to, I got to show her some love because everybody loved that intro song. Like, and, you yeah. ever heard this? Think about Boy, it, that boss talk. Man, <laughs> that's how oh, everybody man. come on here and be like, dang, who is that? Call as me that. Everybody, everybody, man, listen to XO from back in the day. Well, she was hard. She used to rap really hard back in the day. <laughs> this XO motherfucker. <laughs> 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 God, she lied. Man, <laughs> I had to show her some love, man. Cause I definitely love that intro. The intro she go hard with, and everybody it. love it, man. It was that was it. I think I think that was it. What, what, anything else? Yeah, man, oh, you do you you do you have a hit every year. Been ten every year. You got it. How do you or stay 11. so consistent, yeah, bro? That, I was thinking about that. Oh, uh, I love it. I love doing this shit, man. I, I like um having a new song all the time. It, it, it never gets old hearing a new song on the radio. Uh, they play a song in the club and everybody, oh, as soon as it drop, like I get something out of that. You know what I'm saying? So it's, um, plus always seeing new younger artists that inspires me. I like to compete. I hear them and be like, yeah, all right. Thank you. Thank that shit hard, huh? All right, bet. <laughs> so I can come back. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Just like how you, you said, mm -hmm. early, yeah, just like how you said earlier, that sometimes whenever you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes, I'm gonna that boy show you. Go ahead. <laughs> sometimes whenever you know you have a hot song right now and you're making money and everybody love you and then come next year they're playing that hot guy song and not playing yours. Mm -hmm. How do you just like what you say, how do they keep playing yours? Cause you uh, need to tell them the secret to it because a lot of people are not getting played like that. I just really know how to stay with the youth. Like, I know how to connect with the youth. You know what I'm saying? Hip-hop is a young man's sport. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think when you get older, the thoughts don't stop. The lyrics don't stop coming to your head. 
just because you're 50, you still going to be cleaning the house, freestyling, and shit in your head. So just because you're 50 don't mean you got to quit, but I think you have to... I make beats. I think that's how I do it. I, it's, 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 it's weird. I just know how to... I hate to ask him this. I know man. how to make a ratchet hoe pop that's that pussy, man. I just know how to do that. Yeah. I'm real good at that. Have you <laughs> ever made a beat for um, other genre of music outside of hip-hop? Not... I don't have any hits in other genres, but like me and my girl recently, like... um. When when uh, Drake dropped his uh, surprise album, and it was real. <laughs> I fuck with that shit. I love nineties house music. You know yeah, what I'm saying? yeah. Like like Crystal Waters and uh -huh. you know what I'm saying. Um, what's the other girl? I can't think of her name right now. Um, finally, it's happened to me. I can't think of her name. But you know, so I love that shit back in the day, man. That was a different so, time. Yeah, mm. so when you know when Drake dropped his shit and then Beyonce dropped her, you can't take my song, can't break my. I was like, man, this shit hard. So me and my girl were just playing. I made a little quick beat in five minutes and put some chords in there, and we just went in the living room and just did some goofy shit. Went to shade room the same day. Wow. Damn. So I'm like, all right, what shit? So you're thinking about? So I put it out and then Columbia like, hey, what's this? They said, give us that. <laughs> they put that shit on the play on the on the DSP, Spotify, and all that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I can do all genres. Like, I'm cut from the '90s. Listen, I just stumbled across this club god shit on accident. You I go hard though. Out, like, <laughs> I can hard. really rap. I can do all that. It's just I found out that I was trying too hard. And I was like, "Tell me what you know about me." A B C D one two three. This is what y'all want? This simple shit. Fuck it, I'll be the best club guard y'all ever seen. I gotta talk about the elephant in the room mm -hmm. before you get off. If I don't ask you this, my listeners will not, uh, they won't let me make it. <laughs> Zero and Trey. Oh. You got to, you got to, yeah, you got to talk about that. You from Houston. Uh, you say whatever you want to say, you know. <laughs> you, know? you got to tell me uh, the stance on, you know, um, how do this, this happen with, gigantic artists that come from where you from? I can't get in South Side business. Oh, that's in the South. I can't get in South Side business, but, um, you know, I just say it's very unfortunate. Wow. See, you know what I'm saying? How you going to get out of it? My boy was like, whoa, how you going to get out of it? When you interview him, he's going to speak on it like a mom. Oh, he's going to get out of it, you heard? You know what I'm saying? It's, this is this is a Houston question. You got to know that this is coming when you're dealing with an unbiased journalist who just basically, you know, is standing well, I, on the outside I'll, looking in, right? I'll, I'll say this. Me and Trey, we don't have a relationship. Okay. I say it's only two two rappers in Houston I just don't have a relationship with. And it ain't like it's no beef or nothing. It's just we've never been in a space where we got to really get to know each other and meet each other. Okay. Trey and Scarface, I just don't no, know them like Don't that. know them. You know what I'm saying? They we just haven't met each other. When we see each other, it's high in passing, you know. But that's it, you know. So, but zero, I have a relationship with zero. That's my nigga, you know. And um, I just say that, and I just wish it didn't happen. Wow, that's all I can say about yeah, it. Yeah, I, 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 I definitely being from Texas, and 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 seeing it and looking at outsiders looking at us because mm -hmm. this a culture thing for me. I'm trying to figure out ways to bring that unity. That's what I loved about UGK because they wasn't from Houston, yeah. but they had a street up there they called Texas Street. Yeah. So yeah. they kind of looked as if when they said Texas was for yeah. everybody, and I just felt good about that, breaking all those barriers to where we all come together as one. So I have to ask you this, I'm glad I said that yeah. about Dallas and Houston. Yeah. Why is it so different? And you managed to cross that bridge and make it to man, where- Cause y'all country to the motherfucker. Oh, 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 you gonna get it. Educating oh, y'all country. No, I love Dallas to death. This is my second so, home, man. So. But it's just for it to only be three hours. It's a very big difference. It's a difference. Just, it's just in our in our uh, accents. Like Houston, I think we talk maybe slower. slower. We talk yeah. slower. But in Dallas, it's a bunch of her there over her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't care. Like, and I only know one of the places that talk like that. St. Louis. It's like Dallas is is more countryer to me. 
Do you, you know understand the demographics though? Like like East Texas, you got East Texas, which yeah. is from Nacogdoches to Texas, yeah. Canada, and you was down there a lot because oh, you yeah. used to hang. I forgot to mention Sergeant J. Yeah, you that's was just home. Sergeant J. Brother. That's yeah, that's family right there. That's my so brother. so you you were tapping into that era many many years ago. Like how did you end up breaking this algorithm and understanding how the you know the the the, the geographic areas, man? How did you do that? It just come from having, like I say, you, you know what's crazy, man? Like with, with, with traditional Houston music, every every city has its time. Chicago has its time, had its time. You know, Atlanta, we still living in Atlanta time. You know what I'm saying? But right now, Memphis having their time. They definitely are. You know what I'm saying? When Houston had our time, you know what I'm saying? I, Houston, our sound has always been underground. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't for radio, it wasn't for none of that. When it happened, it was just God like it's y'all time. You know what I'm saying? You know, but for the most part, Houston, we don't make traditional commercial music. So when our time was over, the light went away. You know what I'm saying? And with me, I make club music that can work everywhere. Dope. You know, so it ain't just gonna stay in Texas and be hot for six months and go away. When my songs come out, Atlanta gonna play it, Memphis gonna play it, Houston, the whole Texas gonna play it, Louisiana gonna play it, Florida gonna play it, you know what I'm saying? So I never really had those obstacles like most Texas artists have. A lot of Texas artists, man, like the songs will come out and they'll be hot in our region, then it hit that glass ceiling and then it, it goes away, you know what I'm saying? And my songs... They always have went everywhere. Just people didn't know they were my songs. Yeah. Like before Then Leave came out, my song could come on in Florida. The whole club go crazy. Throw that at. I could be standing right there. They have no idea it's my song. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But when Then Leave came out, that's when everybody found out who I was and what I looked like and all that. You know, but to answer your question, my music has always made me stand out. Houston, out. that traditional Houston sound is is is. When you from Houston and you make that sound, it's expected. People don't check. Slim Thug make a whole Houston album right now, and his fans are gonna love it, but they won't champion it as much out of town. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Now, if ASAP Rocky makes Houston music like he was doing, people are like, oh my God, what is this new sound? This is dope. It's just, it's Houston music from out of town. Wow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is, man. You know, so I've always stood out because I had the most energy. In a city where everybody was on that serve. Did you? I know we all must go one day. Um, when you go, what would you like everybody? How would you like everybody to remember you as? That's heavy. Shit. <laughs> I put I put Houston music. I put Houston hip hop on a molly. Mm. That's what I did. Mm. Because before me, it wasn't no club energy. Everybody was still swinging and coming down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was the first one like. Pop that pussy. Pimp C and UGK did it too, but they did it because they liked them ghetto ass hoes and they did it here and there. I was the first one like, hey, <laughs> pop that me. pussy all night. That's all <laughs> I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> all night. Man. And then after that, you know, you you had uh, the Megans and the, the Kindermans and the, you know, the Flick of the Wrists and the, all the energetic music coming out of Houston. The energy wasn't there back in 2010. It was just me. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive, any genre. Whoa! Top <laughs> we three do it every song. I like time. to forget. You like to get out of this. See it after this. Give me my three. Any genre. Well, we know Juicy I just, J. I, I ain't Come gonna on. do that. I, yeah, I, you got to. That I just every, recently lost. I just this. recently lost 15 pounds. I don't know if you see <laughs> in, my, in my titty area. Yeah, 15 pounds. It's like all 15 right, pounds. that's dope. I was just listening to um. Ready to die the other day, so I'm definitely gonna say Biggie. Biggie number okay. one. Biggie and Pac, just because I'm big ninety. Yeah. Number one and two. I'll say that off top. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, number three. After Biggie and Pac. Let me see if you're gonna say what the traditional everybody. Let's says. see what he say. Let's see. Have, Bring it on home. I have to say hey. Jay Z. Jay Z, really? that's no real. That's that's. that's I that's, thought you were gonna come I'm, with I'm, Michael and, Jackson. And I'm. Oh, you said I thought we were talking about rappers. I said any genre. Oh, well, shit. I said any genre. Michael Jackson, number one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Michael Jackson. Uh, I have to say Whitney Houston, number two. And uh, shit. Uh, <laughs> Eddie Murphy. <laughs> you trying to what say? The no. hell? 
fucking with. That's fucking that with. That nigga show. No nah, man, um, <laughs> shit, influential artists of all time with Michael Jackson and Whitney Houston and um, shit, a number three man. Yeah, this uh, is your favorite artist of all time. My favorite, it would have to be Michael Jackson. Uh, like no, but you gotta do number three. three. Number three, three. I have three. What's the number three? Shit, I don't know, man. Number three would uh, James Brown. Hell no, nah, but James <laughs> Brown the goat. Don't get it. That nigga up. bad. Don't play. I don't know, man. I'm going to answer that number three when I come back. Damn, you ain't right. I don't know who. I'm a, Juicy J, let's go ahead and put Damn, Juicy J. I can't throw Juicy J next to Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson, though. <laughs> so you only asked me for three. Well, you got to understand, Juicy yeah. J, I'm the only one Prince. got an Oscar. How right. about Prince? Yeah. yeah, you got to give it up. I never was the Prince, nigga. You weren't? 27 but, instruments. He liked no, you, but, but now Prince, he, I, I liked how freaky he was with them bitches. <laughs> I liked that yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? And that but, surprised me because the way how he used to dress and act, I was like, nah, he don't like women. But you know what I think I realized, man, when it comes to these females, man, they like two guys. Two guys. And they never gonna stop liking these two guys. The bad One boys. One guy is the gangster, the bad boy. Mm -hmm. And the other guy is the pretty nigga. They don't like to admit that they like the pretty nigga because he's not as tough as the gangster nigga. Mm -hmm. But he gonna fuck that bitch too. <laughs> <laughs> the gangster nigga and the pretty nigga. They never gonna stop liking them two niggas. So when you see the pretty nigga, like, man, what this nigga, man? He fucking worrying about his eyebrows and he will fuck your bitch. Damn it, boy. Because he a pretty nigga and, and bitches like niggas that are pretty. Just as long as he don't think he's too pretty, he didn't he in the mirror more mm -hmm. than her and shit. Yeah, no, man. You know test, he gonna run off and leave her. Yeah, and this you know shit's what Kenya Ware told us about. Shoot, no. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, check it, man. Hey, man, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hey, we love you. I told you I'm a big, big fan. Big King is in and the I'm building. Yeah, back. nigga, boss talking fish. I told y'all, niggas, ain't that what Boots' little girl say? I told y'all he coming home today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> check it, man. Hey, man, thank you, man. No problem. Man, no problem, no problem. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a asshole. Stop. <laughs> <laughs>